Hi, I'm Dennis Phillips, and welcome to Everyday Reloading and Shooting. Okay, it was an interesting day at the range today. Um, shooting my AR-556, and this is a continuation of something that I started back in mid-January. I loaded 100 rounds of 55 grain full metal jacket bullets using 26.1 grains of CFE 223 powder. That produced a 3,000 foot velocity. I was shooting 100 rounds at 20 targets, so five shots per target. And this was my first target back on January the 12th. And I think part of the trouble I had here hitting this target was because it was so difficult to see. I'm only shooting at 25 yards, but that's 75 feet, which is a pretty good distance for me. And I had trouble seeing the target. So I came up with this version, um, which has the larger crosses with the black circle in the center. And that may have been overkill, but at least I could see the targets. And my shooting did improve. I went from a 1.38 inch average group to a 1.16 average group size. Well, one of the problems I had was getting my rifle stabilized uh, because between the first video and the second video, my posture changed. On the first video, I was using just a shooting block and I had the rifle on my shoulder. So maybe overall, maybe that was more impressive than this. Because on the second target, I had a backrest under the buttstock to help stabilize it. And um, on this test here, what I have done is I have removed the flashlight from the, um, from the rifle. And I had to struggle some with the shooting position. Let me show you that. Okay. The rifle. It's checked and cleared. This is my normal setup when I'm shooting. I'll have a front bag and a rear bag, just like this. But before, I had this flashlight on there and I actually removed it for the shooting today. But the problem is that that lowers the stock, which means I have to elevate it, but this is how I normally have my setup to shoot on this bag. But today I took the flashlight off. Someone had recommended that, so I took the flashlight off. And the problem here is that if you've got a 30 round magazine, and that's your setup, that magazine hits the table. So now you're not resting on your front wrist, now you're actually resting on the magazine. So what I had to do was I had to put something else under the front of the rifle. Of course, I didn't have the light on it. But you see the rifle is pointing up. So to get it down, I had to stack two magazines on top of each other. And I put the bag on top of that. And so that was what I was shooting with today. And so you can see how that would be kind of an unstable setup. You have control over the angle, up or down, but you don't have a good solid base. So after I was finished with this 30 round magazine, I was able to put a 10 round magazine in, and then that fit just right on the front and rear rest. And of course, I didn't have the light on it today either. But anyway, my shooting posture has changed somewhat. So um, I'm figuring out how to get a good solid base to help improve my groups. All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm expanding on a couple of previous videos where I shot this same load 26.1 grains of CFE 223 powder 
uh, with a 55 grain bullet traveling at 3,000 feet per second. I'll be shooting this target at 25 yards. I shot this same load with 20 groups previously. The first time out, the targets, the little dots that I was aiming at was so small that I couldn't see them. So I made a second target with larger crosses that were easily visible. And I think that was overkill and also didn't have my rest properly set up or adjusted for my shooting. So I hope I've overcome that this time with the current setup. So we're going to send these down 25 yards and we will see how these perform. As always, you're welcome to enjoy the music while I fast forward through my shooting or you can skip forward to the end to the results. Shooting at 25 yards. Let's see how we did. Okay, it was shooting to the left here. So I adjusted the sight slightly to make it shoot more to the right. I'm still pulling to the left for some reason. But these groups look much better than before. So I've got some really tight groups here, 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 here. I'm ashamed to say I had some misfires. I don't know the cause of that. There's a tight group. I think I was a little nervous shooting. I had two split cases. But anyway, we'll take these home, analyze them, and see how they compare. But something else funky happened today while I was at the range. I had three split cases, and I had three failures to fire. And I didn't even know I had three split cases until I was unloading my brass catcher, and I found these, the bottom end. But I didn't see any top end of these uh, pieces of brass. Now I mentioned that I had three failures to fire. I didn't notice the brass until I had finished my shooting for the day. But I had these three failures to fire and you see how the bullet looks like it's pushed up inside of the case? And I thought to myself, what on earth has caused that bullet to push up into the case? And if you look at these photos here, you'll see that the bullet isn't really pushed up into the case the other, the previous case that split, when I had the split case, the front part of that remained in the chamber, and then when another round was chambered, it slipped into the front part 
of that split case. And so it's longer than a standard AR round, so the so the rifle would not go into battery, so it would not fire. So you heard a click, but there was no kaboom, which is probably very good since it was not in battery. But looking at those photos later, I realized what had happened. And so this occurred on the second half of my shooting. So I've got a two-shot group on here because of that failure to fire. So let's get into it, and I'll show you the groups here. So this is the new target I was shooting. I'm using a black dot with a red cross. This was a little easier to see than the first target, but still somewhat difficult. So I think what I'm going to use next time is maybe a quarter-sized black dot or maybe a nickel-sized black dot and just go with the black dot. And I don't think I even need the crosshairs uh, unless, I, unless I do that in black because I think black is easier to see on that white background. But okay, here... Uh, this first 50, I divide this into 50 and 50 because this first 50 was shot using two 30 round magazines loaded with 25 rounds each. I shot extreme spreads of 190, 82, 119, and 75 on the first row, which averaged 117. And I shot the best four out of five at 105, 39, one inch, and 0.67. So this is much tighter than the last time out that I was shooting. I also adjusted the sight on the second target because I saw that it was shooting somewhat to the left. So I moved that over a little bit to the right, and then I had to adjust it again here. So on the second row, we had groups of 103, 124, 78, and 81, with the best four out of five at 67, 79, 70, and 71. So we had two groups under an inch, and we had an average extreme spread of 0.97, and an average best 4 out of 5 of 72. If we come down to the third row, still shooting a little bit to the left, but we had uh, a group of 0 0.77, 0 0.41, 0 0.74, and 0.89, and I will point out that these two groups were shot with a 10-round magazine, so we had a slightly different base under us. But this first group shot an average of 0 0.97 inches, with the best, uh, with the best four out of five at 0.68. Okay, so continuing on, I believe on this row, we, where we had 77, 41, 74, and 89, I believe this last shot is where I had the split case. Now here we did have a row average of 0.70 and a best four out of five at 0.50. So still under an inch. Very pleased with that. And then we come down to the fourth row. This is where we had a 0 .10 inch group. This is where we had three failures to fire. And there was a split case here. And I believe that split case is what left a empty case neck behind for the other round to slide into so it would not fire. So I cleared that jam out of the rifle. And of course, when I do that, it goes into the brass catcher. And I'll look at that later to see if there's a dimple on the um, on the primer. But then there was a shot. And then another split case. And then another shot and another split case. And that's why I had to clear that and I kept going. But anyway, I only got, because of the three failures to fire in the split cases, I only got two shots here. So that was my extreme spread and my best four out of five at 0 .10. You might say, Dennis, are you going to count that? Well, it's a group. It's only a two-shot group. Uh, it's not exactly my fault that there were three failures to fire, although I did reload the ammo. But in any event, our fourth row had groups of 0 .10, 112, 163, and 85. So that's an average extreme spread of 93. And then if you look at the best four out of five, uh, 10, 82, 136, and 63, that's the average best four out of five of 0 .73. So we come down to our bottom row, and we had extreme spreads of 149, 174, 138, and 115 with a average of 144 
And then we had extreme spreads of 75, 108, 74, and 86 for an extreme, for a best fry to five at 0.86. Okay, so if you look at the first 50, we have a first 50 average of 0.97 extreme spread and the best four out of five at 0.68. If you look at the second 50, we had an extreme average of 1.11 and a best four out of five at 0.76. So apparently when I was struggling with the uh, bags and the shooting rest on the first 50, maybe that made me focus more but the first 50 actually shot better than the second 50. And then on the total average, when you look at everything, we had an extreme spread average of 104 and a best 4 out of 5 at 0.72. And that compares with my previous targets where the last time out, I had an average of all 20 of 1.16. And then for my first time out, it was 1.38. So we go from 1.38 to 1.16 to 1.04. So we're making strides. We're improving. And we're getting uh, better at what we're doing here and how we do it. Well, anyway, that was my day at the range. Uh, had a lot of fun shooting. Uh, it was kind of interesting trying to figure this out. Now, the reason for the split cases, when you see a split case like that, Usually the problem is headspace. Now, I have measured the headspace for my Ruger American rifle. I have one set of reloading dies, and uh, I have somewhere between two and a half and three thousandths of headspace in my Ruger American rifle, but I have not checked the headspace in my AR-556. And I was talking to a friend, uh, Aaron Carpenter. He's a group expert in the All Things Reloading Facebook page. And he said if I was to check the headspace on my AR, I'd probably find that I have ten thousandths of an inch there. So I'm going to check that. And I asked him about that too, because obviously if you've got two different headspace settings, you're going to have to adjust your dies accordingly. And he suggested having a second die just for the AR and have that headspace adjusted in that die, and you keep those separated so when you load... Uh, for the Ruger American, you use one die. When you load for the AR, you use a different die, and you have those set differently, and that takes care of your headspace. Part of the problem is, too, I've got two case gauges. One is a Hornady, and one is a Lyman. And I can have cases that won't fit the Hornady case gauge, but they'll fit the Lyman case gauge. And the problem is, if I try to run those rounds that fit the Lyman gauge, but they don't fit the Hornady, they will jam my rifle every time. So there's a minimum of headspace that I have to have there in order for my rifle to function properly. And I don't know what that is, but I'm going to have to measure that. So anyway, there we are. That was my day at the range. Uh, I hope you found this uh, video helpful. If you have any comments or ideas or thoughts, please leave those below. I'd like to hear how your reloading journey is going. So drop us a note and let us know. Don't forget to like and share. And thanks for watching.